2012 contemporary series Tribal Stories. Tribal Stories was the brainchild of Christy Branham, our former curator, who is now enjoying a very happy retirement, if yeah. I understand that. <laughs> uh, the theme is stories told either by or from North American Indians using a variety of contemporary and traditional media. Stone's contribution to tribal stories are photographs that tell the story of ancient peoples and their environment in the Southwest. Although he is from Maine and holds a degree in oceanography, he has lived in New Mexico since 1989, documenting the Southwest with large format photography. One of his projects was recapturing historical photographs of the Southwest, <coughs> shot for shot, with his own images. The results of this project are his book, New Mexico Then and Now, which you can look through right over there and which we have for sale here tonight and throughout the exhibition. His images have been published in several other books and exhibited at institutions such as the Museum of Indian Arts and Culture in Santa Fe and the New Mexico Museum of Natural Science and History. He is also committed to environmental preservation in this part of the world and uses his photography to support the efforts of several wilderness alliances and the Four Corners School of Outdoor Education. I'm really excited with the, uh, the timing of this exhibition because it's, um, his photographs resonate really well with some of the other objects we have on display right now and some of our upcoming... Thank you, Wendy, for that wonderful introduction. I appreciate that very much. Good evening, everyone. Thank you all so much for coming out to help me celebrate the opening of this exhibition. It's really a pleasure for me to be here in Midland and at the Museum of the Southwest. I was first here at the museum just two weeks ago when I drove over from Santa Fe, where I live, uh, to deliver these prints, and I was just so impressed with the facility here, and it's really uh, just great to uh, great opportunity for me, and I, uh, I greatly appreciate that uh, um, chance to, to share my work with you. And I too want to extend my sincere thanks to the staff of the museum for all the behind and in front of the scenes work done in putting together the exhibit. I know just just hanging the prints alone is a huge effort, and I appreciate the buildings and places like uh, Chaco Canyon or Mesa Verde, or even diminutive little two and three room structures in very remote, remote places, or the rock art sites, the petroglyphs that have been inscribed on the canyon walls, or the pictographs that have been painted there. All these sites, to me, have a sacredness to them, especially when you, one considers the original artist or the original person or people who built those buildings. Uh, I find it very powerful, the, uh, just being out in the presence of these places and and thinking what it was like perhaps a thousand years ago when uh, those people or that person was there uh, making those uh, um, those pieces of art or the building. So anyway, I hope uh, that perhaps some of that sense of sacredness of place will, will come across even in the photos. Um, I uh, Maybe I'll say a few words about some specific photos. This is great having this wireless uh, mic. Um, one thing, one theme that I really enjoy working with uh, which is very um, kind of near and dear to our hearts these days is the fact that people back in back in the day uh, and going back to what's called the archaic culture, and uh, there are two or three sites that are even more recent back in to only the uh, um, 17th century or thereabouts. So there's a kind of a, a wide spectrum in terms of uh, ages and uh, the cultures of the people that are represented in these sites. Uh, as I started to say a minute ago, one, the idea of uh, sky watchers. Um, how many of you were sky watchers these past few weeks with the eclipse and the, uh, um, the transit of Venus the other day? That was just very exciting. I know you guys had some opportunities here at the museum to enjoy both of those. Um, wonderful phenomena. Uh, I photographed both of them. And uh, it certainly brought to mind for me, uh, kind of reminded me of my great interest in particularly in visiting sites in the greater Chaco Canyon area in northwestern New Mexico. And I've got several photographs uh, here in the exhibition from Chaco Canyon. The Chaco people were great watchers of the sky. We know from, uh, at least we surmise, from a lot of uh, work that's been done in analyzing the orientations of their buildings and the way buildings are positioned relative to neighboring buildings, that uh, they went to great effort, it appears, to commemorate the sky path of the sun and the moon uh, as it moves uh, as they move through the seasons and through the years and uh, I'll just walk over here for a second one photo which is going to be hard for pieces involved that's for sure and I've been to uh, some of these places multiple times trying to get the right light and there are some I just have never gotten the light I would like to get but yes uh, sometimes um, 
serendipity and you get there and it just all comes together. Um, uh, all, uh, you know, in a, in a quick visit, there are other times uh, where there's a lot of waiting around. Uh, one photograph on the wall is coming in with a bolt of lightning on the background of one of the uh, big buildings at um, Chaco Canyon. I sensed that there was, uh, I knew the thunderstorm was approaching, I sensed that there was a chance after watching the pattern of light, lightning that, you know, maybe I could get a shot um, with the lightning there, but that was, there's a lot of luck involved in shooting lightning. Um, so it's luck, it's planning, preparation, and persistence, and uh, yeah, I'll feel heavy rain if it's very windy, but it's that natural protection from the overhang. Yeah, it's quite it's amazing. amazing. Yes, it's a really unique place.